Baller Alert, calling out Baller Alert. Got no problems with Baller Alert, but everybody on Baller Alert and anybody else out there talking shit about me, here we go. Now, hilariously, this morning, I'm just on Twitter checking for news. We have a few news articles to talk about today. And there's a post, of course, from one of my detractor idiots saying, I have clipped the moment where Phil told someone who says that they are suffering from depression that, hey, at least they're not playing Honda in Street Fighter, okay? This moronic idiot, this mouth drooler, I'm playing ranked Street Fighter 6 with Honda trying to hit Master. What the fuck does that have to do with the stream? Nothing. It's a blatant attempt to derail the stream. You're not gonna come to a Street Fighter 6 ranking stream to get advice on depression. It's not gonna happen. This person is obviously doing this to derail the stream to try to distract these fucking morons. Hey, stupid. I have depression. You dumb fuck. I actually have it. You're a fucking idiot. Get fucked, you stupid loser who thinks you know anything about anything in real fucking life. You know nothing. Please. You're the epitome of a waste of life. Get alert. fucked. Go fuck yourself. You're a loser. You have Dang. no power over anyone on this planet. If you disappeared today, no one would care. That's the truth of the matter. So go make as many clips as you fucking want with your loser circle. This is bullshit. And they deserve to be treated like that. People like that should never be treated with respect because they don't treat anyone else with respect. They need to be downgraded to what they really are. The scum at the bottom of the fucking barrel of YouTube. That's how they should be addressed every time you address them. They should be talked down to because they don't deserve anyone's time. How many idiots talk shit about me in Street Fighter 6? Thousands. There's too many dumb people on Earth. It's depressing. That's depressing. The fact that there's that many dumb asses on Earth who are just happy to revel in misery and toxicity, whether it's real or not, if it's manufactured, they still don't care. This is their life, to sit there and just shit on other people. What a worthless existence. If all those people disappeared overnight, this planet would actually be more a positive place. Morons out there who just like the toxic nonsense that's made up on a daily basis. Moron going, Duh. you're an idiot who doesn't understand the game. Fuck you. You don't know mean nothing to me or anyone else who has a brain in their fucking head between your two ears. When your group of losers can keep being a loser. Really, we're all still waiting for your point. You haven't had one yet. Your points are just nonsensical things that you repeat ad nauseum like a bunch of parrots or sheep. Because you're so dumb. Yeah. The dumbest people, the dumbest bottom of the barrel hey. on the planet, hey. all circled. Who is ready to sway? We're chilling on level one every day. Hey. Ain't nobody gonna tell me how to suck a dog off. Ha <laughs> uh, Welcome, everybody. This is um a low-key episode of the Swaycast. Because um, I actually don't know. Is is because I have TBS later today, and I wanted to recap on some clips. Because people are probably going to be asking us about stuff. Oh, hold on. Let me uh, plug my laptop. So... Uh, let us begin. I don't know how long this episode gonna be. Uh, it might be even under an hour because I'm waiting for a call because I got some uh, very secret stuff to do. So first, let's hit up the good old twitter.com slash um, gamerfacegaming so we can see the recap of yesterday's positivity. Uh, I, I completely think... I think I completely missed anything that happened yesterday with this dude. So let's go. Uh, here we go. Gamer Phase Gaming. Make sure to follow him so you can get your daily recaps twice a day. You know, it's very it's very healthy. A recap a day keeps the Gout Crystal away. So first, on the Don Doko style stream, the Like a Dragon Infinite Madness, we have uh, 55 contributions. But 50 of them were from one single guy. So, you know, man, oh my god, if this dude wasn't there, he would make legitimately $5 on tips and $3 on Super Chats. So, he would make, off Super Chats, he would make like 70% of $3. And he had like 214 viewers. I don't know if that's the average uh, or just at some point in time, but man, this uh, it's pretty miserable. And these games are very long. Very long. And they have so much stuff to do. But uh, I guess he enjoys it. I'm going to check out the daily wrap from yesterday after this one. And then on the day stream, mega positive, 105 contributions. With 25 of them being the, the one minute man daily cucking moment, I guess. And yeah, well, that, that's it. But still, like, very low viewership on the day stream as well. 286. That's not even, like... It's not even good, man. It's not even good in the slightest.
Uh, also, make sure to check out my my toxic supercuts. I made two in the last two days. I started editing in Resolve, you know, the DaVinci Resolve, and that shit fucking bangs. It's awesome. Uh, so, yeah. Super hype video. Epic. Epic. And uh, I'm also taking people's suggestions for other toxic segments like this. Basically, my idea was uh, to distill only the toxic moments. Because some of those... Some of those rants are like 20 minutes long. And I wanted to take just the best moments and put them side by side and slap some like shitty ass effects on them. So now, uh, let's do a DSP Gaming daily wrap, uh, daily wrap viewing, a viewing ceremony. First, we might, we might just, uh, why is this a highlighted video? The first ever Phil and Cat co-op and he put that as highlighted video so he can farm some easy views. Ah, god damn it. God damn it, Philip. You're so fucking greasy. Uh, then we got this huge news day because uh, the Elden Ring DLC was announced. Apparently, uh, apparently it's like $40. But this is, unlike with other games, you don't think of this as like, man, look at how expensive this DLC is. You think of it as like, man, imagine how big this DLC is going to be if it's going to cost that much. So yeah, that's uh, pretty exciting. I watched the trailer when it premiered because... It's, it's exciting, and the trailer was very good, I guess. It looks cool. Very nice. Uh, I'm still stuck in Millennia, but the thing is, I'm not even trying to beat her. Uh, I, I don't really have the willpower to, to bash my head against the wall until it works, so I just gave up and I started playing something else because I'm a fake gamer. Then we got a huge news day in a big mission content in like a dragon let's see what happened yesterday and i'm gonna skip the the actual schedule schizophrenia recap good evening everyone phil here welcome to the daily wrap for what was wednesday the 21st of february 2024 the daily wrap consecutive streaming day of the and also i want to check out that clip of him talking about like doing a, a politics channel on a different platform that's that's some bizarre shit. i want to see what that's about week a very eventful one because overnight there were tons of gaming news announcements, and we've been waiting for significant gaming news for a while, and to have so many loaded into one day kind of turned into, like, gaming news overload, but that was good. I felt like we needed that. So, FYI, today on the Level 1 Podcast, the topics we, talk, we talked about, the return of... Oh, Epic dude, I can, I can actually watch his two-hour Q&A, but I'm not going to be able to finish it because I don't have two hours. Because uh, he did, like, a, a legit, like, actual... Two hour Q and A, despite doing uh, already like thirty minutes of Q and A every single day, because people voted for it because they hate him playing video games so much they would rather watch him sit there and just a answer random questions. Consoles, a Star Wars Battlefront collection that no one knew was even coming out, coming out within a month. Um, no one knew it was coming out because they didn't announce it, and now they did, and people know it's coming out. Of course, the huge Elden Ring DLC, Shadow of the Erd Tree announcement, previews, pricing, etc. Um, among other things, it wasn't just that. There was other announcements as well, but those are the three that are just like coming to mind because there was so much talked about this morning. So, if you would like to hear me cover all of that. Um, yes, well, my my recap on why I don't want him to get into politics is that it's going to toxify people not towards him but towards each other because i've i've seen it happen and it's 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 fucking shitty i'll talk about it when we get to it i talk about it in great detail on today's level one podcast now while i was actually talking about it some people were like well will you do a live react to some of this stuff like for example the trailer for the elden ring dlc and i said well if you want to see that I have a react show every Sunday called DSP versus the internet. Why doesn't someone who's uh -huh. over there submit? Oh, look at this greasy piece of shit, man. Yeah, man, if you want me to react to something, just pay me like $5 so you can send it in. Sounds good. Uh, show and me a cat like. looking like a cobra slopped me today. Uh, Vike, That's stop stealing other people's gimmicks. Webcam for so long. On another note, I hope your plug hooked you up and that you are lit like a Christmas tree. I hate my wife. Um... All right, yeah, thanks. My plug is pretty good. I got a new one now, and he seems to be always stocked. So, yeah, things are good. Uh, big up, Spikes. We'll check it out. So, I think someone actually already has, so we'll see. But anything like that, if you ever guys ever see, oh, brand new game announcement, trailer or something you want to see me live react to, D 
definitely submit it for the show. But that's, over on my that's not a live react, though. A live react is when you watch the premiere and you react to it. Uh, but yes, I guess it is technically a live react because he is live and he is reacting to it. There you go. He reacts channel every Sunday and watch stuff. Why not make that the time to do it, right? Yeah, but it's not free to do so. So it's kind of, you know, it's... I, I don't know why you would be a YouTuber and promote your own formats like that. It's like it's it's like if if we did it on that being said, and we had like you want to ask us a question, well join the question tier and send us a question for Thursdays. It's like why why the fuck would I promote like a paid service that should be free? <clears throat> I don't get it. So, so ja jam packed, very loaded podcast today talking about all the game news. Then we jumped back into Baldur's Gate three, which went pretty well. We continued to head. This is getting mega skipped the impression of what I should be looking for in the cave either. Come to find out, when I first stepped into the cave, I was attacked. Somehow during that attack, there was some kind of an insight check that happened. I passed it. Oh yeah, by the way, people have been running a train on Rich on Twitter. Cause, um, cause he decided to like respond to me in a very, uh, very low effort way. So everybody basically just took a turn to, to stomp on his face. So this is the, this is the original tweet, right? So this is him jerking himself off about his passion for beats and f his passion for music production. He's going to be the next big thing. And he does this uh, pretty consistently. He would post like a, a, a comment from one of his beats videos and be like, yeah, man, I'm so passionate. I'm so talented. I'm like the best. And here I respond to him and I say, Richard, this is so corny. And I ratio him because, of course, everybody fucking ratios rich. He's a bum. And then he responds to me saying, cheers, I'm going to donate to Phil just to put a smile on your face, which is like mega low effort response. He could have at least just called me a name or something because this is like the generic, like, I'm going to give money to Phil so you can be angry. Damn, then piece of peace dunked on him, ratioed him like five times over <laughs> or something. Um, then my official response was... Uh, basically to say, I was going to respond in, I was going to try and think of an actual response, but instead I'm going to let your fans speak, uh, and do all the talking. And this is just the, the, the top comments of his recent streams is just people crying about him. People that actually like him giving up on him. So yeah. Epic shit. Um, so yeah, that's it with Rich. He's still a bum. And there was a hole hidden in the corner of the room where there was an item I needed to do the mission. Oh, and also, uh, I actually have to give a shout out to uh, um, a, a guy on Discord. I don't know if I can say his name or not, uh, for sending me this video of these two. So there's a Kino Casino. It's like a stream show where people, well, people, I mean, Andy Worski and uh, this fat dude basically do like commentary on lol cows and they totally roast the shit out of rich they absolutely destroy rich they absolutely fucking devour rich absolutely bodied and it's it's a lot of fun you're gonna get some really good laughs and they compare him to dsp and they basically tell him that he's nothing compared to dsp which the more i learn about rich the more that opinion is confirmed i think dsp is at least shameless enough to tell you what he wants and to fucking get it because he's so shameless and so deluded. And Rich is just a, a, a completely uninteresting DSP. It's like if you take away any kind of lore and anything that makes DSP engaging as a lol cow, you basically get Richard. But the game never said that. It never gave any inkling of that. And there was no way to see that there was a, an a, uh, insight check because you were in combat. And this gets super skipped. There was no mini game Dondokan Island, no Sujiban nonsense, no, you know what I mean? Like, it was pure exploration, fighting fun mini bosses, <laughs> earning great items for my Look party, this, man. and... Like, every time I watch these clips of him just recapping gameplay, and it never ceases to amaze me how, like, how seriously he's taking this. Like, he's explaining this like it's a work of art. Like, it took him years and years in the making to learn how to make a good playthrough like that tons of questing i think we completed like five or six uh, of the side mission quests tonight some of them actually led into other ones further down 
the road in the night. So it was good that I did the first leg, so then you could do the next leg of it. Um, we unlocked some stuff, more stuff for Dodokan, although I doubt I'll ever go back to Dodokan Island um, to do oh it. Oh my god, at or least Don just... Do just Doko Island, excuse me, it's Don Doko. Oh, dude, it's literally a word. Just learn it. it. It's three syllables. I don't think we're gonna go back to do it, but that was, it was good to at least be unlocked. You got like 15 pronunciations of uh, Don Doko. That had tons of progress. It's funny because right. we've now been in chapter six of this game for something like 12 plus hours. I'm really curious about what the, what game are they going to find that's going to appeal to Kat and Kat's going to love it. Hours so she can be back on stream again. I don't think it's happening anytime soon. And the playthrough is like 26 hours long. Or I think right now it's like 28 hours long. So it's like, dude, almost half the game I've been in the same chapter. Yeah, that's how they said it. The whole first five hours of the game is cutscenes. Then you actually get to Hawaii, and it starts to open okay. up. Okay, I mean, it's a Yakuza game, man. Now that I'm actually playing them, because I played uh, Like a Dragon, the first one, and I played Judgment. And Judgment, I like Judgment a lot more because it's more serious. But yeah, it's, it's games where you get, uh, like, that's kind of what you sign up for. A bunch of cutscenes, a shit ton of dialogue, everybody talking too much. That's kind of the, the game you sign up for. Why are you crying about it? And then we get to Chapter 6, everything happens at once. Like, literally everything. The optional dungeon, Dondoko Island, Sujiman, tons of side. Why is it all in the same chapter? It's so weird how they've paced this game. I'm just happy now that every time we play it, we're going to be making good progress rather than being stuck grinding. So, had a great time tonight. Audience seemed to have a great interactive time with me as well. Really? Two thumbs up. Everything went well. Looking forward to more. I mean, bro, the second stream... What, what did I say? What is it? $20 and 15 were from one guy or something like that? It was like actually crazy, but never mind. If he says it's awesome, then it's awesome. We ignore uh, the rest of reality. Uh, but uh, now I wanted to watch that um, that epic video about politics. And for Damn. some reason, for some reason, this shit is 30 minutes long. What does he talk about for 30 minutes? God damn. Army I hate this. And now I want to talk a little bit about confusing feedback. Confusing okay? feedback. So here's what I mean about this. If you guys aren't aware, I have a suggestion box thread open for like three days now. Oh, let's actually let's actually check that out first, so we can get it out of the way. Because I really wanted to take a look at the suggestion box and see exactly what's going on and what kind of suggestions we get and why they're confusing. I, of course, I'll have to s scroll through half of YouTube to be able to find it because this is just uh, Dark Side Phil and how he does stuff. By the way, I think he stopped running DSPGaming.com. I think the forum is actually finally gone. The only place his community had to go and hang out doesn't exist anymore. That's fucking based. So, okay, let's read some replies. Stop doing the schedule every single day and recapping what you did the previous day. Immediately. This is a 10 out of 10. It's a 10 out of 10. And it's the top comment too. Like, what, what are you going to say about it, Phil? Obviously, your community is overwhelmingly like wanting this to happen. Okay. There's no reason to go over your schedule more than once a week. That is absolutely true. Even if his schedule changes, you can just do a, a special schedule. Like, I don't know. You update your schedule with the change, and then that's it. Right. Please find more interesting things. <laughs> this one is epic. It's epic. Please find more interesting things to talk about if you're going to call this a podcast. A schedule recap is not a podcast. This guy went real hard on this. He went real hard. And, of course, we get a pay pig. Uh, wow, well, that's a one-month pay pig, so it must be fake. Um, who says, I second this. It's repetitive and unnecessary. But uh, Phil knows better than you. And that's the whole thing. Like, he spent the last 15 years telling everyone that he knows better than them while simultaneously asking them for all the help in the world. And now we kind of flip the switch and pretend like we care about everybody's feedback and the opposite of, like, knowing better than them but when they offer the feedback, we switch back into, I know better than you, so your feedback is wrong. Just like he reacted to this one. I think I think I, I read his response, uh, I, I watched his response to this specific comment in my previous stream. And that's how he reacted. It's like, okay, listen, this is why I do things. It works, so your feedback is not good, okay? 
in oh my god okay okay let's let's go through this one this one is gonna be special uh but i'm gonna let the bot read this because it's just too much for me plus the bot has a very pleasant name i'm gonna go point by point let's oh there's no bot on firefox god damn it okay i will not be surprised if you choose to ignore this post in the event you do read this or even showcase this post on your stream, I want you and the viewers to really consider this advice. Okay. Okay. Well, it, it, this is about to be crazy. One, you have made chat an integral part of your gameplay. So much so that the sense of exploration or adventure when you touch a new title has completely evaporated. That's a 10 out of 10. That's bars. That's exactly true. And it's like, it, it, it's again perpetuating the whole idea of of gaming for him is just um is just an assembly line you just give him the next piece and he puts it together and he passes it on absolutely consider uh, okay as as you rely on your chat more for more innocuous decisions and solutions you abandon the actual enjoyment of watching a streamer discovering a mechanic or overcoming a hurdle that also is is hurting his stream in the way that Sometimes unexpected things happen, and that's what makes a stream fun. Like, you know, like um, the, the whole like Tevin's fault moment on, on, on Tevin's restream of the Halloween stream. Uh, the marked one having a guy on the porn side show up in front of the camera while, while they were like bullying Derek. Like all that impromptu stuff that sometimes just happens that makes streaming what it is and that makes it great has been completely sucked away from his stream. Then, consider the rule you have about spoilers from your own chat and actually apply them. While it is okay to ask for chat's input from time to time, you have become more and more aware when you straddle the line from aid to over-reliance. Totally. There we go. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, so this is this is the uh, the Ann Lead comment, dude. This is actually Ann Lead's comment. Because I, I... Yeah, now I got it. Okay, what's the second one? Let's see what Ann Lee thinks about this. Second one is actually apply your rules regarding bullying and harassing in his chat. That that can't really happen. Because a bunch of the people that are bullying and harassing are pay pigs. Uh, only Ice Coffee can get away with whatever the fuck he wants. Um, Canadian Kirk can get away with whatever the fuck he wants. Alright, um, oh, wait, what, what is this? You have an active chat you ignore because of a combination of lack of moderation and a cultivation of a community that bullies and harasses any legitimate new viewer and active fans who casually watch with a combination of spam, trolling, and even cases of erotic roleplay. Damn, people like getting sexually harassed in his chat. <laughs> uh, and, um, I mean, you also, you, you kind of don't know who is and who isn't a part of his community because there's so many LARPers. Who pretend like they are some of them are super obvious to tell that they, they're larping because they're just repeating detractor memes but some of them just are very good at fitting in and laying low then the next one is uh, shorten the pre-stream i mean yeah i mean yeah the pre-stream probably uh many of the segments shouldn't even exist they shouldn't even exist um or or maybe I mean, I know. Uh, I'm thinking about what is plausible for him to actually do. What is realistic for him to actually do. And I think it's probably going to be the opposite. Probably the pre-stream is going to get more and more dominant. Um, because he just doesn't want to do gaming. I mean, the guy is as honest as he can be with just telling you he doesn't want to do gaming anymore. And it's time to change. So he's basically pulling a Review Tech USA. Uh, but except he doesn't have a passion for making beats. Two dollars from VLX eleven thousand three hundred and eighty-seven LFM World first ERP in Phil's chat. Uh, LFM World. What's an LFM? Let me just look it up in a separate tab, of course. LFM Low Fuel Motorsport. Probably not that. Look. Uh, I don't know, dude. Please uh, educate me on what the LFM means. Oh, looking for more. Okay, there, there we go. There we go. All right, next up we got uh, actually poll your chat. Well, I mean, like, what's going to be the difference? What What do you choose between um, the, 
b between shit and shit. Like how it doesn't matter. It's going to be a bad decision anyways cuz the the de the decisions that he's polling people on are bad to begin with. Just like how we ended up with a 2 hour Q&A the other day is because he asked people, "Hey, do you want to watch me be boring as fuck in Tekken 8 or you want to be watching me boring as fuck in uh in the Q&A?" And they just picked the lesser evil. So leverage playing on your mini PC. That's totally true. Uh, he could be playing a lot of like low performance demand games and uh, just like kind of hype games that are PC only games that are popular right now. But I don't think his audience is just going to buy it. They tune in for the big hype stuff and not for those like tiny little games that are just mostly on PC. Ease up on your actual supporters. Uh, many folk know how much you keep certain known bad elements around just so they can donate while you are all, while also evading the rules. Yeah, oh well, that that's uh, that's that's true. Stop enabling them, basically. Stop enabling them. And then cut back on the uh, cut back on the ads. I mean, sure, of course. This is uh, there's been so many people in this chat complaining about how many ads he got, and it's just. It just doesn't work. Uh, you have a se sever audible buzz. I have no idea what that means. Uh, severe? Oh, severe. Okay. It's been explained to you multiple times in your solution on turning down the volume on the Scarlet device is not a solution. Uh, you can hear an audible 15 dB buzz, etc, etc, etc. Yeah, well, there we go. Shout out to Ann Lead for the positive constructive feedback that actually made it through and is the second top comment. Oh, there we go. Another suggestion. Your audio balance is massively off. The voice is extremely quiet. The game often overpowers you. This is a major problem. And this shit's been going on for like actual years. Like actual years. Probably even since he was using a uh, an XLR mic with an interface. Like pretty much on a technical level, his stream is a disaster. And uh, also that extends to the way that his uh, setup is laid out which makes everything as slow as possible and as clunky as possible. So not only are you just killing your performance, you're also, you know, you're killing the viewer's experience and you're killing your pay, uh, your pacing because it takes you so long to write somebody's name on the leaderboard. If you're going to do shit manually, make it be done in the fastest, more conv most convenient way possible. All right, here we got a meme. I've been a fan of yours since Heavy Rain, of course. I get why you had to change from how you used to be. Isn't isn't meant to be mean. But nowadays you are really boring. I mean put me to sleep boring. He by the, he greenlit this comment. He approved this comment. This must have hurt. I haven't been able to watch any vids since Hades. I've tried. But hold on. Hold on. Wouldn't that just mean that the only thing that made DSP interesting, uh, at least to that person to begin with, is that he was just racist and sexist and toxic as fuck? I mean, don't get me wrong, that's what makes him interesting to me. But uh, I'm not really a fan of his since Heavy Rain. So it kind of like, this is, this is the thing. Once you take all the edge off of DSP, you got nothing left. You just got a, a boring old dude that falls asleep on the night streams. Right, so somehow you need to figure out how to be more entertaining and you'll be more rewarded with more income. Somehow, I guess. that That's how it works. The co-op play is a nice start and I hope Cat gets more comfortable with it. Well, that's over. That's over. Bye-bye, Cat. For now. Okay, then we got another one. And uh, the guy says, you didn't address my suggestion last time around. Oh my god, it's not going to get addressed this time either. You should not be setting up on stream, ever. It's disrespectful to any of the people watching to have you see mess around with your OBS settings or stream settings. Yeah, totally. Uh, you shouldn't be doing this at least on like a regular basis. Uh, I would say so. That kind of stuff should be done before a stream or after. Sure. The only time you should be setting things up is an absolute emergency where your cur current settings have failed. Sure. Good point. And that isn't what we are seeing it paints you as underprepared of course he is fucking underprepared i mean this is the same guy who doesn't know how to make a group in obs or at least he knows but he just doesn't do it because he's an idiot 
Uh, get rid of a lot of the schedule talk. The daily wrap should go. I think the daily wrap should stay. And matter of fact, I think the daily wrap should have the schedule and the daily wrap in it. And even if he wants to make it like a 20-minute video, if that floats his boat, I don't care. That means I'm just not going to be watching it. And the podcast is going to be better because there's going to be more time to talk about other stuff. Yeah, if people know uh, want to know what happened on the last stream, they'll check. Well, it, it it's not a bad idea necessarily. I guess for somebody like DSP it is, but it's not really a bad idea to have like a, a stream recap or... Well, I wouldn't say a stream recap is a very good idea because then like it, I, I guess it has to be a fun stream. Um, but it, it's just the execution, like most cases in this case as well, is the execution is terrible. Uh, talk during gameplay. Wow, that's that's not something that I, I would thought I would see in this. I know you resist this, but it helps to deal with the dead air. Like, bro, he actually can't do it. He actually can't talk and play video games. He cannot multitask, like legitimately. I think it might be because the TV is too far away and he actually can't see. So he needs to put in more effort to concentrate on stuff because he can't see it. And also, it's like, you've seen him try. It just doesn't work. He can't talk about something, let alone something that is different from the game. Because, yeah, he can talk about the things that he sees on the screen. Oh, this is a table. Oh, this is a chair. Oh, look at this computer. He can do that. But once you, you try and let him play and then, like, chit-chat or talk about something else, it just doesn't work. Then we got, your community posts are a lot. No shit. Sometimes he got like two to three uh, posts a day. Insane stuff. Uh, yeah, I'm not even able to find the previous suggestion thread because it's full of posts advertising the next stream or talking schedule. And the thing about this is so many of those fucking posts are not available anymore. Look at this. This video isn't publicly available. One post after that. This video isn't publicly available. One post after that. This video isn't publicly available. At least fucking delete them. At least delete them when the stream is over. God damn, you lazy sack of shit. Right, keep community posts infrequent to avoid spamming somebody's inbox. Listen up. This is a good point. I agree with this. But spamming somebody's uh, community feed or spamming somebody's inbox is something that he doesn't give a fuck about. Like, he hasn't been giving a fuck about since since back in the day since the first time he started making youtube videos that's just been a thing if you want to watch dark side phil if you want to be a fan of dark side phil you got to make a separate account and just watch dsp on it because he's gonna destroy your sub box he's gonna ruin the community post tab okay next up we got edit your throwback videos into longer format playthroughs well yeah that's uh of course that that would be the best if he can do one playthrough in like three separate videos, yeah, this this is what the guy says. Have them in three long parts. That way you can get through the old playthroughs faster. And add chapters, of course. People can always go back and finish the video. Then, uh, of course, we have another one. Uh, first of all, uh, shout out to J-Rod Music for nine months and shout out to Francisco for 15 months. Who says, uh, big ups Meerkat, big ups you, Francisco. Damn. 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 The chap. All right. So uh, next up, we got another one of those. Don't have the daily wrap. Don't recap it. Then we got don't do the, the schedule. As you can see, the two super, super obvious points of feedback that he should address is just just stop doing the schedule. It sucks. And stop doing the... Um, the the stream recap it fucking sucks and uh, i think both the trolls and the fans can agree but the only person who doesn't agree is dark side phil it's dark side phil so let's go back to this video i think we got uh enough of these because like outside of that they're probably just the same uh we got op cuck uh who says i think you could do well expanding more into gaming news oh yes this guy who has no idea what's happening in gaming at any given point in time who only gets his news from headlines on twitter he should expand to do even more news i i agree with you i agree uh you know what i th i think he should expand on he should start doing politics so let's hear his take on doing politics right 
And the suggestion box basically is like, just tell me what you want, you know, improve me. I want constructive criticism. Tell me what you and want, what you really, really want. Posts. Uh, and I'm not reading them fully, but I'm skimming them as I approve them. And I can tell you right now, a lot of the people posting the suggestion box are saying things like, streamline the podcast. Yes. Make the podcast shorter. Yes. Less time talking, more time with gameplay. Um, not necessarily. I mean, I think if he wants to do a compromise, thinking realistically here, because he's obviously clearly decided that two and a half hours of everybody's time every day goes to the podcast and half an hour of music before it starts, right? So um, a compromise would be for him to still do his fucking two-hour bitch-ass podcast, but at least do, like, different fucking segments. Because, I mean, he's decided to do it. He's already... You cannot change his mind that the podcast is going to be shorter. I'm not kidding. That's what it says in the suggestion box. Okay? Okay. So, the people that pay your bills and make it so you have the funds available to completely fuck your whole life up playing Candy Crush are saying something almost unanimously that you should do to please them more. But you... You already decided to do something else. You already know what you're going to do. So now we're going to justify why we're not going to do this. The, the thing that the clients want, the thing that the customer base wants, overwhelmingly. Let's hear why. Okay. Okay. That's the feedback you're leaving in the suggestion box. So then I do a poll. Now he's going to gaslight them into thinking that they didn't actually leave that feedback, and that's not what they actually want to do. That's what's going to happen, isn't it? What do you want to see Tuesday night? And the majority of people are voting for, let's just hang out and talk. Yes. Um, that's still you talking, but it's not. And of course, here, he's doing it on purpose, bro. It, it's either he is a complete simpleton and a complete moron, or he's doing it on purpose to kind of like, quote unquote, win the argument. Because many people who argue in bad faith, they don't want to... They don't want to have a, a conversation with someone to, to like actually clarify the issue and to, to reach a, a consensus. They want to win the argument. And this guy wants to win the argument that it's a good thing for him to talk as much as he wants on his podcast and for, for him to do all the schedule. So here now we're using this point that doesn't really make sense because the, the two-hour Q&A, it's not about recapping streams, and it's not about doing schedules. It's a Q&A, and he knows this, but we're trying to twist the argument so we can win it. You mean like what I do on the podcast that the suggestion box is telling me to do less of? Suggestion box telling you to do less schedule and less stream recap. You see this? It's super easy. Like, it's super easy to, to see what he's trying to do here. And now he's just straight up calling you wrong. Uh -huh. Well, you, you guys don't even know what you want, so I'll just keep doing what I want. How does that make any sense? And the answer is it doesn't. None of it makes sense. I'm getting conflicting information. Oh, example, man. We have seen in the last few weeks... Thank God I just read the, the suggestion box. Actually... Because now I know what they've been asking for. What's happening on a lot of daytime streams is that people are coming by... And they're talking and engaging in the podcast and supporting the stream on the podcast, right? We're getting things like tips and super chats and memberships and gifted memberships during the podcast. Sure, though, but, but here's the question. What segment of the podcast does he think people support? When people come to my stream and, and send me a super chat, are they going to send me a super chat when I'm playing music in the beginning of the stream, which is the, less, the least interesting part? Are they going to send him money and tell him, hey, Phil, please do more of those schedule updates. Please do more of the, the stream recaps. No, they, they, they mainly give him money for the Q&A and for the gaming news, or at least the, the message when they give him money is related to one of those segments. Then I start to play the game and all the contributions just stop. The engagement dies off. People Imagine, this is actually also crazy that he admits this. Imagine being 15 years into gaming and like doing it as a job and you make more money not gaming in your content than gaming. Like what does that say about your content in the last 15 years? What does that say about you and your business sense? I don't know. Believe I sometimes have more viewers on this podcast 
than I do for the gameplay sessions. It's going to happen today. Right now, we have 394 people on the podcast, and when I play Baldur's Gate, we get between two, 300, right? So you're telling me I have more of an audience for the podcast and more support for the podcast. Also, you got to wonder why. It's almost like during the podcast, you get the most toxic and we get the most interesting content, both the trolls and the fans. But then my feedback is, do less of the podcast. <clears throat> and it makes me scratch my head. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. You, you understand exactly what they mean. So there's two, two cases. Case one, he is a complete buffoon, like an actual certified idiot. Case two is that he's misinterpreting this whole argument so he can just keep doing the thing he wants to do, which is schedule updates, uh, shitty stream recaps, and bullshit like that. And uh, the podcast is going to get longer. And wonder, you know, what what is this feedback then? Right? At one, on the one hand, people are saying, do less of this. But then that's what's getting the most attention, the most support, and people are now voting in a poll for more of it. So, huh? Right? I just, I just don't get it. It makes me confused. It absolutely makes me confused. Um, so I don't know how to take that feedback. But okay, then how are we going to resolve the issue then? I guess we don't. We just drop it. And we talk about it a month from now again. Because that, that's what he's going to do. Is going to say, well, I guess since you guys can't decide, well, I don't know. I'm not going to do anything about it. And then two months after that, we're going to be like, oh, you guys, I need your feedback again for the podcast. Nor do I know how to respond to it or how to improve my content when I'm literally getting two completely opposite impressions from feedback I'm getting. Right. <clears throat> In fact, what we've been talking about recently is me moving forward. OK. And. Me becoming older, I'm not going to be Mr. <laughs> Full-Time Gamer forever. I'm 41 years old. Oh, and when, when he starts talking about this stuff, he does the weird hand thing, like the hand stretch that people that have, like, a carpal tunnel or something do, like the hand exercise. Because, like, he convinced himself that he's falling apart or something. Like, he can die any day now because he's become, quote-unquote, old. This is the wildest midlife crisis I've ever seen in less than two months holy shit my birthday's almost here it's great. and i've seen some dudes like actually lose their minds when they get in their 40s pretty, pretty crazy right and women as well <clears throat> as i've told you guys when i do this okay yeah look at this days, bullshit today, not so bad but some days worse i get really bad tenseness keep in mind guys uh, i don't know the the retirement age in different countries but in in most of them that i know of it's 65 you work until 65. Of course, depending on the job and a lot of other factors in your region and so on. But this dude is 42, almost. And he's talking about like he's he's on his deathbed. Pain. Nine pounds and 99 pence from yeah, big ups. Robertson. Big ups, Meerkat. Uh, big ups, Aid Robertson. Shout out to you and Becca. Uh, what happened with the boat night super chat? It didn't come out. And he asked me, well, it's because it was toxified. And it says, uh, can we get a schedule update? No. We're going to get a schedule uh, uh, down date. My right hand. I feel all the muscles here in these fingers are tense and tight. And sometimes I get shooting pain and, yeah, yeah, and right. numbness in You're the You're jerking hand. off too much. It's carpal tunnel. And I know I'm going to get it. He knows he's going to get it. I've Even though it's all of his shit is self-diagnosed. All of his shit. Except the bad back. I think he went to a doctor that told him that he needs to have a surgery. And he decided not to have a surgery. So he could take advantage of people for the rest of his life. Same condition with the nose. He can be a, a little attention bitch. Syndrome. A lot of his audience left because they couldn't take the rambling before gameplay slash he can't get it into his brain that changing to more gameplay can bring in new people and bring back old ones. But he never changes. No, it's it there's no point, man. You can you can only polish a turd so much, but it's still gonna be a turd. Been playing and with with his stuff is the same. Like he can do a, a million formats. Like, he tried to do the reacting stuff, if he does cooking stuff, whatever. It's going to be interesting for two weeks. And then it, we're going to be back to begging for, for $5 tips again. Games there's there's no saving this, man. It's over. Time. Well, not full time, but It's games. over. Full, uh, you know. The thing with, with other YouTubers that he mocked and he made fun of uh, for retiring is that they do it gracefully. Someday they decide, man, I'm fucking, I'm burned out. 
I'm tired of doing this. I got enough money or maybe uh, I'm capable of, of leaving the channel to somebody else. So they get to make a cut of the profits and I still get some passive income and so on and so forth. So they just retire and they ride off into the sunset. This guy is going to go down kicking and screaming until the final day he's on YouTube. And until the final frame of him streaming himself on the internet, he's going to be kicking and screaming because he doesn't want to do that. No, because for him, this is just not just a job. For him, it's his entire supply of um, of narcissistic uh, like energy. You know, he gets he gets the narcissism supplied through power tripping on people and shitting on them. He gets a bit uh, like a million compliments from people. He gets people sending him emails talking about how amazing he is. Like this is it, man. For him, this is not just the stream. Non-stop, daily. He is never going away. The last 15 to 16 years of my life. That's almost half of my life, right? So obviously, as I get older, this is going to become a problem, right? I'm not going to be able to just sit around and do this anymore. <clears throat> so I need to find a way to diversify content. It can't just be Phil sits around and plays video games all day, all right? But then at the same time, I get feedback, and the feedback is, do less of the podcast so you have more time to play games. Because the problem right now is it takes you too long to get through games. But did we not just have the discussion that I'm getting older and I shouldn't play as many games and we should diversify the content? No, so that's no, 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 no. That's not a discussion we had. This is something that you said you want to happen. We didn't have this discussion. Maybe that's the same way that he has discussions with Kat as well. Maybe he just declares what he wants to happen. And then she says yes, and then th then it turns into a, a discussion. Then we decided this. Oh, very interesting. We didn't have that discussion. Telling me to do less of the Cause, podcast. Because I assure you, Phil, uh, many, many of those people that still keep watching him, they watch him for the video games. They don't watch him for the lobotomized uh, the perspective on news and current events and gaming. No, they watch him for a dude playing video games. Asked to play more games. It doesn't make sense. And that's what I mean. Like, I'm really trying to to, to, to grasp. And, and the, yeah, that's the whole thing, that he knows what is best for the stream. He knows it. He knows that it's best for the stream to stop doing the, the shitty schedule. He knows it's best for the stream to stop doing the shitty recap. He just can't help himself. He quite literally cannot help himself. Everything going on here, like, it seems like there's definitely two roots that are happening. I, if you want the truth, here's what I really think is happening. I have a very different fan base that splits, right? I've been doing this for- Oh, they are very different for sure. They are very, very years. different. You've got people who've been around for 16 years who like the content and want to see it continue in the way that they're used to. They want me to play a lot of games. They want to see me play all the hot new releases. They're upset when I skip games. Some people are so pissed at me. I skip Phil, some people pretend to be pissed at you so you can give us a rant like that. There's so many people who pretend to have an issue with him just to get him on a tangent, just to get him venting about something, just to get a reaction out of him. That's what trolling is. They're just fake. They're not real. You do what you think is best for your stream and for your business, and you take the responsibility as the operator, as the business owner and the business degree possessor you take that responsibility to do the things that are best for you and your business. Suicide Squad, because I'm not checking out Hell Divers, right? I didn't try Foam Stars. I'm not playing Persona 3 Reload. You know, they're angry at me. Why didn't you play all those games? Old Phil used to play every game, and now you're not playing those games? No. New, new Phil, modern Phil new is a Phil. live streamer. <laughs> I can't play all those games. There's just not enough time. It's not viable, right? <clears throat> so there's not much I can really do about that. You know, but that's it. People are so used to the old days. Before I was a streamer, when I, in one week I would beat four games because, first of all, games were much shorter. You know, the average game back then was 8 to 12 hours so long. This is, uh, so this could... is, this whole thing reminds me, this whole thing, this whole discussion of uh, time management reminds me of this classic meme. Uh, it's this one. So you got food, $200, data, $150, rent, $800, candles. Three thirty six hundred on candles in utility one hundred and fifty dollars. Please, someone who is good at the economy, please help me budget this. My family is dying. Then the first response we get is spend less on candles. And then the response to that is no. 
So again, an obvious problem, an obvious solution, and he just doesn't want to do it. That's it. The same thing with the fucking WWE champions. But at least that, with that, I understand it's an addiction. And addictions are not rational. They're not explicable. They're just kind of random sometimes. And, but, but this thing is like, like, what is he addicted to schedules? Is he addicted to, to, to what recaps or just talking about his own content endlessly? I mean, Sam is, is absolutely right whenever he says that a DSP stream is about a DSP stream. It's content about producing content. And the, the actual producing content part is much less than the content about the production of the content. It's almost like he's having a, a documentary about his own streams every day. Play through a whole game in a few sessions and move on to the next. Um... And it's like, here's the thing, though. Here's a quick solution to his... Um, well, his drought of content. Why not pick up a new hobby? Why not try and get interested in basketball and have like a daily segment like talking about basketball? Or for example, you know, basketball, because I know he feels a particular way about the, the demographic that plays basketball. But why not something else? I don't know. Get into movies. Do a movie review every day or not every day, every couple of days and upload that on the fucking React channel. Like, start watching the TV show, something like some actual hobby, some actual occupation that is not sitting on stream or sitting on the couch drinking and playing mobile games. But in addition, that, that would help him. Into that, um, now there's just a lot more games out at once, so you can't really play them all, right? And I'm a live streamer, meaning everything I do is on a stream that I have to have scheduled for you guys to be here to see it live because that's how I make my livelihood. Back in the day, there was no direct capture, no live streaming. I could literally play as, as much or as little as a game as I wanted in one day as long as I uploaded the videos. And then the videos would get tons of views and the ad revenue would pay for my life, right? Now I have to be here on stream, but that's way less time because it's about being here on a schedule, interacting with you guys, making sure the stream's running, playing a certain amount of gameplay, then having to upload separate because you can't upload when you're when you're streaming. That kills your bandwidth. Can't do that. So, you know, it's it's got to be limited. Uh, what? And again, with this whole thing, like this shit doesn't work on anybody who has the faintest idea of how YouTube works. If you fall for this narrative, you're an actual idiot. And I have a bridge to sell you, you moron. Because uploading videos to YouTube, quote unquote, in the capacity he does it, is an autonomous process. Is something that happens by itself. You don't need to grab a bag that says YouTube video on it and carry it all across your house or to the highest floor so you can upload it. No, you drag a video, you write two lines of text that is descriptive title and description. And his descriptions are all the same. It's just uh, links to how you can pay him. Uh, I used to be able to, I used to actually be able to record and then upload while recording. So that's Whoa. another reason why I would put out more gameplay. Every time I went to upload a batch of videos, and again, it's just right like worthless excuses. Nobody falls for these excuses. Nobody falls for it. The complaints that he gets from his audience are just the same. They're the same. They will always be the same. I really can't even do that right now. When I'm uploading, I can't stream. It's not possible. Because this, all that this kind of a discussion on his behalf is going to do is make people give up. They're, as we've seen happen, as we've seen happen in the past so, so many times. And I think this new feedback saga is going to make a lot of people give up. Because you see how it works, man. Somebody uh, feeling completely honest, troll or, or DSP fan, they went and they gave him their opinion and their time and told them, hey man, this is what I have a problem with. If you get rid of that, your streams are going to be more enjoyable to me. And then all we get is, is this fucking endless yapping. And then you just give up. And it's like, yeah, this guy is never going to change. I give up. I'm dropping it. Possible, right? And the thing is, yes, uh, uh, I, I see that in chat. Kaz says, the people have been asking him to shorten the pre-stream since like 2016. Uh, the only reason he renamed it to uh, the pre-stream podcast was to deflect that criticism. So not only did he not, did he not I follow that? Have mild OCD. He does what I did as a kid and I would rage or flat out give up if it didn't go how I planned or timed. Got in the way with my ADHD. But I wasn't a selfish, 
nasty gaslighting person. I learned to take a lesson and learn from them. Yeah, but、uh, I don't know how o- OCD would fit in his entire office being a complete mess, because that that just doesn't make sense with me. But it, that's what it's in- is interesting about him is that he's such a compilation of of so many bad human traits that people start considering like, hey, is this guy like, w- what is his mental situation? What's up with him? That's why every almost like every week、uh, we get these discussions circle around like, is is DSP gay? Is DSP autistic? Does he have OCD? Does he have ADHD? Does he have、um, what was that?、Uh, NPD. So it's it's really interesting. It's、uh, it's very fascinating to talk about because he is like a rat in a cage, and people gather around to to do like experiments on him. And it's like, oh my god, what is? How is the rat gonna react to the fake memberships? How is the rat the rat gonna react to? This thing happening? How is it going to react to outside interference? It's just a, a social experiment that he himself is putting on for the world, and he doesn't even know.、Uh, so yeah, what I was going to say before that is, not only did he not follow the feedback that people had from him for from like 2017, 18, 19, 20, whatever, that he doubled down on it and then made the podcast even longer. So. Yeah, I've got to find that perfect balance. I do, and again, I, I'm seeing the future as a balance between、uh, gaming, which I still want to do, and I want you to understand, I don't want gaming to go away ever. Like I would, if I'm going to continue to make content, you know, indefinitely, <clears throat> indefinitely, I want to always、oh. be a part of it. Now I don't know. There、wait. is no way, man. Okay, in his own logic. His own logic. He knows that he spent the last fifteen years devouring burgers and drinking insane amounts of alcohol. He knows that he is not in a peak physical condition. He wants to stream endlessly until the end of time because, I guess, when people joke about him being a cockroach and him surviving despite everything, he takes that as a compliment. He takes that seriously and is like, "Yeah, I'm, I'm never gonna go away." So he's not even planning on going away, but what's gonna happen if if he gets、um, some kind of serious mental, not mental, a serious health situation happening, like it did last month,、uh, not last month, it did last year in like、uh, late October. What happened with him then? He got like a cold or something that he convinced himself was COVID, and of course he didn't take any kind of、uh, precautions that people take during COVID. Because his wife was still working at retail then and meeting people every day, but anyways, and he took like a week off streaming and it was cold black. It was cold black. We got like super in-depth begging videos and like health explanation videos and like sickness elaboration videos. It's insane. What's gonna happen if this dude gotta go to the hospital? What's gonna happen if he has to pay all those American bills that people have to pay when they go to the hospital in the U.S.? When currently he's got at probably not more than fifteen hundred dollars in his bank account at any time, and that's all he's got. What's gonna happen then, with the the fans and the pay pigs just falling off one by one, getting turned off and leaving somewhere? What is he gonna do? Is he gonna do a GoFundMe? Yeah, then then we're gonna drain all the pay pigs, and when he comes back to do the gaming stuff, they're not gonna have anything to give him. So yeah, this is is completely. Under underdeveloped idea for him to stream infinitely because he believes that just because he managed to survive for 15 years by being a pathetic, shameless roach, he's gonna be able to do it eternally. No, that's not just. It's not how it's gonna happen. Stan, well, but we all know. We all know his ultimate goal is for his parents to die. Cat can't even sit in a chair. Health coin pumping. Yeah, well, yeah, Cat can't even sit in the chair. She needs to get up. He needs to get up. She's like thirty-five years old, and she's acting like she's fifty-five, and he's acting like he's seventy-five. So yeah, they're finished. They're finished. In a couple of years, things are get real bad.、Uh, but yeah, his、uh, he's definitely waiting for his parents to die and leave him whatever they got, so he can sell their house and have some money, and then spend it, and then have more issues again. Always be the majority of what I do will eventually it actually become the minority of what I do, and I'm doing other content more. I don't know, but I absolutely want to do gaming. 
uh, you know, as much as I can, you know, as long as I can, it's my passion. It's what I, I, I got it's known for on the internet. And so I don't want that to go away. But I guess the question is, how much gaming? What gaming? Do we have to pick and choose? For example, right now, just think about this. I'm playing Baldur's Gate 3. I'm playing Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth. We were playing Sea of Stars. We put that on hiatus. We got Final Fantasy VII Remake coming out. Oh, he didn't even finish that game? Sea of Stars? He didn't even finish it? It's on hiatus. Oh, yeah. That's definitely coming back. And when it comes back, it's going to be like six months from now. And nobody's going to know what happened in the game. And he's just going to be playing it out of context. And we got Dragon's Dog Epic. Too. I think at one point what we're going to have to start doing is only pick and choosing the games from a certain genre that are the biggest ones or the ones that make sense and people want the most. And everything else just has to be skipped because I can't be playing five RPGs at once. It doesn't work. When you're playing five RPGs at once, you can never make enough co uh, progress in any to really satisfy the hardcore fan base of that game. You see? the one then, Okay, how are we going to pick and choose those games? Are we going to make it a poll? And then when that game underperforms, it's going to be the audience's fault again. Oh, will you guys pick this game? Game that I am making. It's, it's, it's always, it's like the, it's a cycle. It's never going to end. This will always be a thing for him. And it will always be the same thing over and over again. And he, the death of his channel is going to be him turning against his audience. Because it's been happening more and more in the last year and a half. We got the Lavinia rant. We got people like being banned from his chat and he's ranting about him, calling him all that shit. We got the, what was it? The eat shit out of my ass thing, which was completely like centered around him shitting on his own fans. And it's just crazy. It's just crazy. And the more LARPers there are in his chat, the more he's going to start turning against his chat. Because his chat has plenty of retards that we we know are, are there. And they're degenerates and they're fucking idiots. But then we got... Even more people pretending to be ones. We're pretending that we're like those. And that's going to make him hate his own fan base even more. And at this point, he's become entitled on them um, paying for his living effectively. So what's going to happen is that he, w without even knowing, he's going to just ruin his own fan base and ruin his own living. So that's, that's all that has to happen is just the consistent pressure. And it's just going to crack. System. Like he's been cracking a lot. Progress in is Baldur's Gate 3. And that's literally because I'm playing it insane amounts. Because it's so long, right? And even then, now it's going to have to go on hiatus for Final Fantasy and people are going to be upset. And it's like, dude, I played it for 100 hours and you're going to be upset. I know they are. <laughs> I know how these people are, right? <clears throat> but I definitely feel to me like there's just too much of the same. Right? I played Street Fighter 6 for 7 months, dropped Street Fighter 6, and I'm playing Tekken. So you get it? People are now, well, it's more fighting games. Well, you're right. It's a completely different kind of fighting game. But you're right. It's still a fighting game. Right? And, and that's the thing. When, uh, when companies say the customer is always right, even when he's not, that's kind of the, the whole thing about that, that saying, is that sometimes the customer is going to be factually wrong. But instead of trying to explain to him how wrong he is, because that's going to turn him off from your product, you trying to condescend or explain to them, well, actually, you're wrong about this. That That's just not going to work out. You got your RPG fans who want RPGs, but then there's too many at once and everyone's upset because there's not enough of the one that they want. So I'm definitely seeing patterns emerge in the games that I'm playing. And I think the key moving forward is going to be finding the happy balance. Oh, by the way, um, he recently figured out how to destroy the Argentinian membership scam. Well, I, I guess he thinks he did, but he was very proud of himself. Like, very, very proud of himself. So I guess what he does is the moment the member bomb drops, he blocks the guy, and that stops the members from being distributed. But, you know, oh. it requires you to be... To be looking at it all constantly. The right genre, the um, the right amount of each genre at the same time to keep that variety going to appease each type of gamer that actually watches me for those various types of games, but also finding a way to diversify my time for other projects. Like right now, I'll be honest, the one stream that I'm doing every couple of weeks of the Retro React stuff is a really great stream. We get a good audience of no, it's not. people. Who love the well, it is great for what he wants to do. And what he wants to do is look back on himself 
from 15 years ago and talk about how much better he is now because that is feeding his ego massively to look back and be like, oh yeah, this guy sucks. I'm so much better now. And have other people validate that by supporting those streams. It does wonders for him. It's it's amazing for him as a narcissist to go through. Stuff, and they're engaged and they support that stream. So there's no reason for me to not continue that and do more of that. But the more that I do that, the less new stuff I can create. Because I'm only one person. You know, this would be different. I'm only one person, says the guy that has people work for him for free to populate his newest channel with content. I am only one person, says the guy that doesn't make his own thumbnails or banners or avatars. I am only one person. If I were a team of people working together and we each split the content up and one person could do this and one person could do this and people, were, you know what I mean? I'm one dude. So I'm in demand a lot. It's crazy that I'm one guy being pulled in so many directions. We got the standard React style stuff here. We got the retro React throwback stuff here. We got the new stuff here. And then people also want me doing content where I'm like podcasting and talking and hanging out. So it's like, that's like four different projects I do all at once in a work, in a work week. Look at how proud he is of himself. Look at how proud he is of himself. There's nobody who can give Dark Side Phil more compliments than Dark Side Phil himself. It's like, I, I get like secondhand embarrassment watching this clip. Even if I like the guy. It's wild to me. Because like, uh, it reminds me of Rich. The way that he talks about his own work is like when Rich starts talking about his beats and how amazing they are. Because when I moved out here 10 years ago. It's like the most pathetic thing ever, dude. Get a fucking grip. You're a middle-aged man. My goal was to diversify. I told you that was one of the reasons I wanted to move. Uh -huh. Is because I wanted to do variety content. I didn't just want to be a gamer anymore. And inadvertently over the last decade, that's happened. I never really intended for that. Because I remember I said I wanted to do a gaming news show every day in the morning. And now I basically do that. It's just called a podcast. It's not really a gaming news show. It's a podcast. Yeah, yeah. How much of your gaming news show is focusing on gaming? Podcast with a variety of topics, but I'm doing what I had intended, but I never realized it until I was already doing it. You know. Um. So anyway, this is my, where my confusion comes in, right? So tonight, you guys are voting. What do you want on the late stream? Fifty-four percent right now have voted to just chill and hang out tonight. I'm okay with that. I'm really totally fine with that. I'll hang out with you guys for a couple hours. We could do whatever you want. Like I said, we could just talk. Um, we could do some suggestion box stuff. You know, we could, you know, whatever you want. I'm, I'm okay. But the thing that gets me is so many people are like, don't make, make the podcast shorter. Yes. And you vote for like essentially podcast 2.0 on the late stream. Yeah, but okay. I'm, I'm not even going to talk about this. This is, uh, this is him just blatantly refusing, refusing to understand. And that's it. And it's like, so that's a mixed message, right? So I don't even know what what's more in demand. Jasper, what do you think? Jasper, do you prefer? No, no, we're not giving Jasper yeah, I don't any know, attention. Man. I don't even know what to say. So anyway, today, let's now get to the schedule for the week. Today, look at this. Look at this is the whole point. This is the whole point. And this is a nice freeze frame with him licking his lips. It's almost like he licks his lips every sentence, man. God damn. This it's the whole point. Three and I'm excited because it looks is like that we do like scheduling schizophrenia every day on top of all the other stuff that is already bad. And don't get me wrong, I would prefer him not to improve anything because then we get to laugh at him for eternity. And it's not like him improving is going to get more people to watch his streams because fundamentally he is the issue. Uh, so this would basically guarantee them like a certain rate. Well, because, like, him being a good streamer and a good entertainer actually conflicts with who he is as a person. So you you just can't, you can't force him to be entertaining. You can't force him to be good. Because he has a completely different idea of what is entertaining and what is good and what is fun. People on the Seattle City Council championed it, made it a law, and then quit the council. Wait, 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 what? That way, And that law was that everyone who does not, just in my local area, worldwide right now there's a lot to talk about there's a lot going on in politics in the united states if you guys aren't aware this is an election year already politics are hugely and look hugely at this look at topic. this look at this shit, man this is why i hate the fucking idea of dsp politics i'm gonna get super toxic over the segment it's because this dude he doesn't vote he doesn't go outside 
He doesn't engage in any kind of a real life community. All of his political opinions will be based on anecdotes and something that happened to him in the past and something that is happening to him right now and how it hurts him and that it, it fucking sucks and the government is idiots. And what's going to come out of this is just the people watching, not even, um, not only the, um, what, uh, not, not only the trolls, but his own fans are going to start getting in conflicts with each other. So it, Eventually, even though this bumbling fucking idiot is just going to fence it and not get anything done and not say anything of value, the people that surround him are going to go at each other and it's it's going to get toxic as fuck because I've seen it. I've seen how these uh, these conflicts can arise. I've seen how far it, they can escalate and they're really fucking annoying. Stop it. J just this morning, all right, I opened up my social media feed. And I'm not even just talking worldwide politics, just locally. There's stuff going on in my local area, you know, politically, that there's all this different discussion and argument going back and forth about, you know? And I'm like, wow, I could totally chime in like, on these. Because like in this whole time, he's not saying, a, he, he hasn't said a single insightful thing. Different. He's topic. saying things that I could have told you without having any kind of involvement or interest in the topic that are going on just in my local area you know and give my opinions on them because some of them are kind of interesting did you are, are just here i'm just gonna give you one quick example i talked about it the other day local lawmakers who are on the city council of seattle several years ago championed a new law and that law was that everyone who does food delivery around here. So look at this. This is this is what DSP politics is about. Talking the the politics behind food delivery, because of course it's the only thing that fucking concerns a guy who never goes outside. Hub Hub, Uber Eats, DoorDash. That those delivery people would make a flat fee per delivery. That way they're guaranteed. It's a literal pay. DoorDash right now, politics. The way it was based was they only make tips. Now what if someone you know screws them on a tip? Then basically they're not making much money or any money. Uh, so this would basically guarantee them like a certain rate. Well, these people on the Seattle City Council championed it, made it a law, and then quit the council. The law went into effect in January. So now all food delivery costs has gone up by about $10 an order. And now all of the orders have plummeted, absolutely plummeted. No one wants to order food anymore with delivery because the cost went so far up. Okay. So now all the drivers are like, well, now actually they were intending for us to make more money, but we're making less because there's less orders to deliver. And all the local restaurant businesses are like, yeah, we're also losing money. I just read an article yesterday. A, a local pizzeria says we used to get 20 to 30 orders in the afternoon for pizza delivery from these apps. Now we're getting two. So we went from 20 to 30 different orders of pizza and now we're only making two. We actually had to cut back on hours and send people this home is from it, work. Bro, this is it. This is the future of DSP politics. This is like, this is the elevator pitch of about DSP politics. It's just a dude ranting about how people ruin pizza and DoorDash. Because that's the only things he cares about in life. And this is going to get so many people toxic at each other. When this is a predominantly very positive and lighthearted entertaining community. It's going to make it a fucking shit show. Because there's no work. Isn't that great? Because it, it, it already is pretty hard to, to, to prevent people from doing this. And this guy is going to light the match. So that's what I mean. Like, I could sit here and give you the entire my discussion on it, what I think about what's going on with that, give you different sides of the argument. Yeah, and he doesn't have different sides. All this shit that he's talking about, he doesn't have it. He doesn't know what he's talking about, but he's he's thinking that he does. It'd be actually a pretty interesting discussion to have. Uh huh. And I feel like I have a lot to add to that. There we go. And this is why that channel is gonna happen because he feels like he has a lot to add to something. And this smile that he's giving you right now, this is expression means that he's confident in this. He's confident in what he's saying. He genuinely believes in that shit. And also, beside the point. Um, I'm not interested in him doing politics shit because I have nothing to add to it. I don't give a fuck about it. I don't engage with it. It's not entertaining unless somebody embarrasses himself in like a spectacular fashion, which always happens, by the way, from any side of the spectrum. But it's just like DSP talking about it shit fucking boring to me. You know, a lot to say. But that's not my content. That's not gaming, right? 
That's nothing that what I usually do. That's nothing at all like the kind of content that I would usually make. It's completely different, right? Um, and I feel like if I were to do that kind of content here, or even on the React channel, or even on the Throwback channel, it wouldn't work. Why? Because everyone knows that that is not really the content that I do there. I feel like if I was to do content like that, it would it'd be... Obviously, it's going to be polarizing, and some people are going to be upset if you don't agree. Okay. And that's, that's really the reason why it's held me back all these years from doing uh -huh. this. Uh-huh. It's that... Oh. Kind of content, okay? Oh, because it's going to piss off a pay pig, and they're going to stop paying his bills. That's, that's why. But now he can't help himself, because the narcissism has overwhelmed the, gre uh, the, the greed. Now he's more greedy. Uh, he's more egotistical than he is greedy. So now he, what he wants to do is do kind of like a, a compromise solution where he's going to go on some random shitty ass website and have a scuffed ass fucking stream so he can avoid pissing people off. But those people that care about his political opinions, they're the ones that are going to tune in. So any way you look at this, any way you slice it, he's going to be pissing people off left and right. And it, it, the, the worst part of this is, or I guess the best part, is that he's not going to see any kind of benefit from this. Like, what do you think is going to happen? He's going to get invited onto fucking Fox News to be like a, a newscaster, presenter, or a, a panel member? No, nothing's going to happen. He doesn't even have extreme enough takes to get him like, to shoot him up in the mainstream. So he can be trending on Twitter and be like, whoa, this guy just said that fucking this and this and this and women shouldn't have rights and they should just like turn on the ovens and burn all the pizzas. He doesn't even want to say that. He's going to be sitting on the fence talking about how he wants everyone on earth to be happy. And that's going to be his based opinion. There's so many people out there that sadly. Because like you, you can't, the, the way that the the landscape of like political commentary is made it's like a sports team you got to pledge allegiance to one of the sides if you want to actually profit off of you know the side you're you're pledging allegiance because they're not going to show up and send him like a hundred dollar tip uh because he's fucking riding the fence and he's talking about people wanting to be happy he needs to have actual hot takes he needs to have extreme opinions that are going to make him entertaining for the viewers all right in, in, I hate to say it. They uh, he might get he might get the attention of like uh, Kino Casino. They might watch him make fun of him. Maybe Ethan Ralph, the Lol Cow podcast. But it's those people that he doesn't want to associate with. It's those people that he looks down on and he hates. You're not gonna get a shout out from I don't know who who does the political stuff. Uh, Tim Pool, I guess if he still does it. Uh, Destiny, yeah, maybe Destiny. He's gonna get acknowledged by Destiny. And, and those people, but he hates them. He wants nothing to do with them. Uh, think from a mature mindset and understand that people can have different opinions. People can have differences of opinion, right? On everything. Politics, religion, games, food, life in general. And that's okay. It's totally okay to have differences of opinion. You don't have to always agree with everything that everyone else says. As long as you respect someone else's opinion and you make an effort to understand where they're coming from. And it's okay also if you want to relate your opinion to them and maybe then they'll understand where you're coming from. And then at the very least, you won't be at each other's throats. But I hate to say it here, at least here in the United States, so ever since Trump was elected many years ago, the politics here are either you're with me or you're against me. Either... You know, you're all the way over here to this side, or you're all the way over here to this side. And and this is why it's is gonna be fucking miserable. Cause this guy, this is his perception that he's gathered from living on the internet, for living on Twitter. Because he hasn't talked about these issues with real humans. He's talked about it and he's seen people talk about it who are permanently plugged into the internet, who are chronically terminally online. And this is why his idea is fundamentally flawed. And these two heads just run into each other like this, like two brick walls. And no one wants to work together on anything. And no one wants to compromise. And no one wants to actually see things as they are. They just want to live in their own big, like, cultish followings. Uh, how does DSP live? In a chat where you can't say a thing that goes against the grain? Or you're going to get banned? He lives in a literal gated community. How much more of a bubble you can be in? A literal gated community like who is he to talk about this shit and he's also in in like the top five percent of of uh earners worldwide 
Like, damn, Phil. I don't think you're a man of the people who has uh, the right to talk about the issues that concern real people. Because here's the thing. When he starts uh, going off about politics and shit, we're not talking about video games anymore. We're not talking about movies and we're not talking about schedules. We're talking about real issues that concern real people in the real world. And just hate each other constantly and think that each other is the villain, right? And that's the saddest thing is that our country will never improve acting like that. Now, going hand in hand with that, sadly, on the Internet, there's so many people that are polarizing to one side or the other that, God forbid, you're, you say something political that either agrees or disagrees with one of those sides. Now they hate you. So imagine here I am. I'm a content creator who makes gaming content and people like the gaming content. And now I start talking politics. Yeah, I, I don't think, no, I don't think uh, most people would do that, even though there are some people like that. Uh, I'm willing to set aside somebody's political leaning if I enjoy their stuff, unless it's like super extreme. I mean, if they're like uh, some extreme racist or s some fucking crazy shit, then I, I don't want anything to do with them. And God forbid that I... Because like most, most of the people, most of the people on the internet are pretty like mild uh in in the vocal minority is those extreme uh politispergs that only exist on the internet they only live there i say something that you don't like to this all of a sudden how many people will be like well you know i like phil's gaming but man he said that thing he just doesn't agree with me politically on it so i can't ever watch his content ever again no yeah, this is like 1% of people. None of it. I can never watch any of it. Fuck the gaming because he doesn't agree with me on this political stance. And it's like, what? That's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Right? Like, that's the dumbest mentality I've ever heard. There's tons of people on this planet I don't agree with, but I can still enjoy the things that they do. Actors, musicians, sports people, content creators on the internet. Hell, there's a ton of content creators on... Okay, I think we're back now. God damn it. God damn it. Is back. Is back. Is back. There's just a lot of people who don't do that. If you don't 100% agree with me, you're my well, enemy. It, it, was, uh, it was at a pretty good time because I got to end this soon. Because I got some work I have to do before the TBS today. And but let's, let's see what he's going to say in a couple of minutes. That's ridiculous. What a stupid, immature, not developed mindset that is. But so many people are still like that to this day. They do it to me with games, right? So right now, I'm 80-some hours into Baldur's Gate 3. No, no, we're In not sitting through this. A lot of people feel with just emotion. And the moment that they get something they don't like, that's it. I hate it. And that's what I mean. That's what I'm really worried about going forward in my life. If we're going to do this kind of content, right? And we're Then why? Like, I don't know why this, where this idea came from. And if you guys know, please leave a comment from it. Why exactly politics? Why not something actually else? Because he could do what the anti-woke people are doing and just take like a Marvel trailer and talk about all the wokeness in it because there's an abundance of that shit nowadays and, and you know, grow his fan base and make some like easy videos that are not too too risky to make. Why do we got to go into actual political discussions? What makes him, what makes him think that he's going to make money off of it? He's going to grow his presence off of it? I, I have no idea to do political talk and stuff like that that there's gonna be people that are just straight up upset with me because they don't agree with what i say and now they're never gonna want to check out my stuff ever again and that's concerning you know i'm not a giant guy on youtube i'm not someone with millions and millions of views then don't take the huge risk of going into politics like what and if i lose a big chunk of my viewer base because someone doesn't agree with me politically that could kill my business right so that's why a lot of people say well we want it well why take the fucking risk we're asking for this we want this now when he knows he knows that like 10 people 15 at most run his whole business and everybody else is just chump change and pocket money like why why bother do something that's more safe then and i'm like i don't know should i or should i not i'll tell you this if i ever do political content it's not gonna be on youtube I have to go somewhere else. I have to go somewhere else. Uh, why? Like, you're not going to get canceled and shit. But bro, what? Because of stuff you said. I know there's other places. Like, I know people have talked about Rumble and stuff like that. Like, maybe that would be the future is I do that kind of content on a different place. But is he really going to do, like, oh, come on, man. Like, what is he going to say that's that extreme that it's going to get him canceled off of YouTube? Because I'll be honest, I do. I feel like it wouldn't be fair. This is the thing. I think he, he feels a temptation to, to talk about politics because, well, narcissism, insane amounts. And also, he sees how much money other people make off of just talking about politics. 
but at the same time he is so scared that he might say something he doesn't really trust himself because he might just say something like out of line and lose a bunch of fans and the trolls are gonna clip the shit out of them they're gonna send the clips to sir moist to mudahar to keemstar everybody's gonna drag him everybody's gonna make fun of him and it's like dude then don't like actually don't if i do it here you might get people who are just fucking stupid about it right and the funny part is i'm not republican i want you to understand that like i'm not conservative so i would be on rumble talking not all the way to the right which is going to be the rare things. I think Rumble's where all the conservatives ran what? when they were getting like kicked off of YouTube, right? <laughs> so, I don't know. Like, I don't know. You know, again, this is just me talking because I'm getting such mixed feedback. Cut back on the podcast. We want less talking. Right? Oh, I just, epic I don't shit. Know, man. <laughs> I don't know, man. Ugh. Of a few views he has that contradict leftist views. Yeah, but guess what? I have some views that contradict rightist conservative views. So that's the thing is like, people would not would label me as two things I'm not. Perfect example of this. I know this is a lighter example. When I started as a YouTuber, I told everyone my favorite console was the Xbox 360. I love the Xbox 360. I liked it way more than PS3. So I was I was a total Xbox fanboy, according to everyone on the internet. Man, that DSP, all he cares about is stuff on Dog, Xbox. Xbox what? Fanboy, don't listen to what he says. How was how is this supposed to be what? Okay, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna hear him out. Then the next console generation. I, I told everyone. I like PlayStation 4 way more than the Xbox One. I think it's a much better console. Dog, better what? You know, everything's better on, on PlayStation oh my, 4. Oh my god. So this is an example of him having a balanced and nuanced political leaning. It's it's that he used to like the, play, the, the Xbox and then he liked the PlayStation more. Like, that's what we're talking about. The guy is an actual simpleton. The guy is an actual village idiot. All of a sudden, public opinions, oh, he's a Sony fanboy, he's a Sony pony. Look Did at you know this Marshall idiot. Sony? It's like, what? How could I have been an Xbox fanboy, but now I'm a Sony fanboy? It doesn't even make sense what you're saying. And now this console, Jen, I tell you guys I like them equally. <laughs> so I can't imagine what people say, you know what I mean? Oh my But you're God. right, like, now imagine that I'm, I'm, I'm talking politics, I'm saying, well, I agree with this, I agree with this, but they're completely different from the different parties. I don't know, but I bet you people would always spin it in some stupid negative way, right? Anyway. Um, anyway. This is just me talking. Sure thing, again, Phil. I don't really know what to do with my content when I get so many conflicting pieces of feedback, right? Yes, this was the most truthful statement he has said in the duration of this stream, almost an hour and a half, which is still uh, less than the Q&A he did the other day. And it's true. I'm just talking because I don't know what to do with my content. That is absolutely it. And that's how I'm going to end this stream. I'm going to go do my work and then get ready for TBS. Uh, make sure to swing by. If there's anybody else streaming right now, go and spread some love. And I don't know, do a backflip and a kickflip. Uh, thanks for watching, everybody. See you again next time.